द ह्यूमन आय एंड द कलरफुल वर्ल्ड द ह्यूमन आय यूज इज लाइट एंड एनेबल्स आस टू सी ऑब्जेक्ट्स अराउंड आस इट हैज अ लेंस इन इट स्ट्रक्चर वॉट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ द लेंस इन द्यूमन आय हाउ डी द लेंस इज यूज इन स्पेक्टिकल्स करेक्ट दी फेक्स ऑफ विजन लेट एस कंसिडर दीज क्वेश्चन इन दिस चैप्टर we have learned in the previous chapter about light and some of its properties in this chapter we shall use these ideas to study some of the optical phenomena in nature we shall also discuss about rainbow formation splitting of white light and blue color of the sky the human eye let's begin The human eye is one of the most valuable and sensitive sense organs. It enables us to see the wonderful world and the colors around us. On closing the eyes, we can identify objects to some extent by their smell, taste, sound they make or by touch. It is however impossible to identify colors while closing the eyes. Thus, of all the sense organs, The human eye is the most significant one as it enables us to see the beautiful colorful world around us. The human eye is like a camera. Its lens system forms an image on a light sensitive screen called the retina. Light enters the eye through a thin membrane called cornea. it forms the transparent bulge on the front surface of the eyeball as shown here the eyeball is approximately spherical in shape with a diameter of about 2.3 cm most of the refraction for the light rays entering the eye occurs at the outer surface of the cornea the crystalline lens merely provides the finer adjustment of focal length required to focus objects at different distances on the retina we find a structure called iris behind the cornea iris is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil the pupil regulates and controls the amount of light entering the eye The eye lens forms an inverted real image of the object on the retina. The retina is a delicate membrane having enormous number of light sensitive cells. The light sensitive cells get activated upon illumination and generate electrical signals. These signals are sent to the brain via the optic nerves. the brain interprets these signals and finally processes the information so that we perceive objects as they are power of accommodation the eye lens is composed of a fibrous jelly like material its curvature can be modified to some extent by the ciliary muscles The change in the curvature of the eye lens can thus change its focal length. When the muscles are relaxed, the lens becomes thin. Thus, its focal length increases. This enables us to see distant objects clearly. When you are looking at the objects closer to the eye, the ciliary muscles contract. This increases the curvature of the eye lens. the eye lens then becomes thicker consequently the focal length of the eye lens decreases this enables us to see nearby objects clearly the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length is called accommodation however the focal length of the eye lens cannot be decreased below a certain minimum limit try to read a printed page by holding it very close to your eyes you may see the image being blurred or feel strain in the eye to see an object comfortably and distinctly you must hold it at about 25 cm from the eyes the minimum distance at which objects can be seen most distinctly without strain is called the least distance of distinct vision it is also called the near point of the eye 
For a young adult with normal vision, the near point is about 25 cm. The farthest point up to which the eye can see objects clearly is called the far point of the eye. It is infinity for a normal eye. You may note here a normal eye can see objects clearly that are between 25 cm and infinity. Sometimes the crystalline lens of people at old age becomes milky and cloudy. This condition is called cataract. This causes partial or complete loss of vision. It is possible to restore vision through a cataract surgery. Now let's see defects of vision and their correction. Sometimes the eye may gradually lose its power of accommodation. In such conditions, the person cannot see the objects distinctly and comfortably. The vision becomes blurred due to the refractive defects of the eye. There are mainly three common refractive defects of the vision. These are myopia or nearsightedness, hypermetropia or farsightedness, and presbyopia. These defects can be corrected by the use of suitable spherical lenses. We discuss below these defects and their correction. Myopia. It is also known as nearsightedness. A person with myopia can see nearby objects clearly but cannot see distinct objects distinctly. A person with this defect has the far point nearer than infinity. Such a person may see clearly up to a distance of few meters. In a myopic eye, the image of a distant object is formed in front of the retina and not at the retina itself. This defect may arise due to excessive curvature of the eye lens or elongation of the eyeball. This defect can be corrected by using a concave lens of suitable power. As illustrated here, a concave lens of suitable power will bring the image back on the retina and thus the defect is corrected. Next is hypermetropia also known as farsightedness. A person with hypermetropia can see distant objects clearly but cannot see nearby objects distinctly. The near point for the person is farther away from the normal near point that is 25 cm. Such a person has to keep a reading material much beyond 25 cm from the eye for comfortable reading. This is because the light rays from a close by object are focused at a point behind the retina as shown here. This defect arises either because the focal length of the eye lens is too long or the eyeball has become too small. This defect can be corrected by using a convex lens of appropriate power as illustrated here. Eyeglasses with converging lenses provide the additional focusing power required for forming the image on the retina. Next is presbyopia. The power of accommodation of the eye usually decreases with aging. For most people, the near point gradually recedes away. They find it difficult to see nearby objects comfortably and distinctly without corrective eyeglasses. This defect is called presbyopia. It arises due to the gradual weakening of the ciliary muscles and diminishing flexibility of the eye lens. Sometimes a person may suffer from both myopia and hypermetropia. Such people often require bifocal lenses. A common type of bifocal lenses consists of both concave and convex lenses. The upper portion consists of a concave lens. It facilitates distant vision. The lower part is a convex lens. It facilitates near vision. These days, it is possible to correct the refractive defects with contact lenses or through surgical interventions. Now, if I ask you, 
Do you know that our eyes can live even after our death? By donating our eyes after we die, we can light the life of a blind person. About 35 million people in the developing world are blind and most of them can be cured. About 4.5 million people with corneal blindness can be cured through the corneal transplantation of donated eyes. Out of these 4.5 million, 60% are children below the age of 12. So, if we have got the gift of vision, why not pass it on to somebody who does not have it? What do we have to keep in mind when eyes have to be donated? Eye donors can belong to any age group or sex. People use spectacles or those operated for cataract can still donate the eyes. People who are diabetic, have hypertension, asthma patients and those without communicable diseases can also donate eyes. Eyes must be removed within 4 to 6 hours after death. Inform the nearest eye bank immediately. The eye bank team will remove the eyes at the home of the deceased or at a hospital. Eye removal takes only 10 to 15 minutes. It is a simple process and does not lead to any disfigurement. Persons who were infected with or died because of AIDS, Hepatitis B or Hepatitis C, rabies, acute leukemia, tetanus, cholera, meningitis or encephalitis cannot donate eyes. An eye bank collects, evaluates and distributes the donated eyes. All eyes donated are evaluated using strict medical standards. Those donated eyes found unsuitable for transplantation are used for valuable research and medical education. The identities of both the donor and the recipient remain confidential. One pair of eyes give vision to up to four corneal blind people.